Hello, brothers and sisters. Um, thank you so much for uh, following this installment. This is about chapter two of the book, Ethics into Action. Okay. It was written by Henry Spira, who worked on the animal rights movement and had a huge impact. And he was the, the inkling of the second generation of animal rights. Um, and there's a lot to be learned from his book. Um, I encourage you to you know, follow my series. There's the preface, the first chapter, second chapter. It'll kind of catch you up, okay? So I want to talk about chapter two. And I'd like to say hello. I greet you in love. And more importantly, I greet you in purpose, okay? So I want to read chapter two. All the chapters, I'm not going to read it. These are takeaways. Um, all the chapters begin with a direct quote by Henry Spira. I'd like to read that quote to you. The second chapter is called Animal Liberation. This is Henry Spears, or this is actually uh, Peter Singer's quote. He's a co-author, okay? He said, If we have learned anything from the animal liberation movements, we should have learned how difficult it is to be aware of the ways in which we discriminate until they are forcefully pointed out to us. A liberation movement demands an expansion of our moral horizons so that practices that were previously regarded as natural and inevitable are now seen as intolerable. Okay, so that was the, the opening quote. Now I'd like to quote the book itself in chapter two. Once again, these are just takeaways and it's talking about how Henry Spira, the subject of the book, became involved. And the uh, chapter of this section is a logical extension, and it goes, At 45 years of age, Henry scarcely thought about animals. He had never had a cat or a dog. He ate meat without asking where it came from. But in 1973, two events coincided in a way that changed all of that. First, Henry acquired a cat. Somebody going to Europe had dumped a cat on me. This is Henry's quote. I wasn't even the first choice for this cat. Just the backup or emergency if something went wrong with someone else who had agreed to take her. But then that person could not take the cat. And I got dumped with her. I sort of figured I had more important things to do than play with this cat. But that cat seduced me in a matter of minutes. And I've stayed seduced with cats ever since. So I want to expand on that. And that is discrimination. And there are two subjects in particular I want to talk about, especially for the XJW community. The first subject is homophobia, okay? Homophobia. Growing up as witnesses, you know, we're taught the Bible says this is wrong. But more importantly, you know, I want to talk about the use of the three-letter F word. That we grow up, we're very comfortable. Hey, God hates him. God hates, you know, that word. Therefore, we hate him. So there was an open discrimination, an open, homophobe, an open homophobia. Now, you may have left the truth, but you may still have um, direct homophobic ideas and thoughts. You may use derogatory language toward the homosexual community. Um, and some of you may think, oh, well, he mo oh, the conscience class must be gay. And you know what? Go ahead and think that. That's not offensive to me, and that's one thing I've learned, okay? Because even though you may not openly use that language, you may not openly hate you know, the homosexual community, um, there is something called internalized homophobia. These are the thoughts and the practices that you've been instilled with growing up that internalize to the point where you're not even aware they're there, okay? And there's a lot to be learned from the gay rights movement, okay? In my political experience, the first campaign I ever worked on was gay rights. It was the no one prop eight. This was the gay marriage amendment in California where they wanted to make a law to ban gay marriage. And it was the first real opportunity I had in politics. And it was presented to me. They're like, hey, we want you to work on this campaign. It's a great way. It'll be a, a great career booster. And I, I agonized. I thought, gay rights? I'm not gay. What, what is my girlfriend going to think? What's my family going to think? But I thought about it, and you know, I, I'm you know I'm a, I'm a liberal, and I thought, what a hypocrite. So yeah, you know, I will take on this campaign. 
and I was terrified. I was like, everyone's going to think I'm gay. You know, I'm going to be made fun of. My friends were not like, you know, liberal minded people. They were just regular dudes who drank beer and partied. And they use a three letter F word all the time. But let me tell you right now, that experience changed my life because for six weeks I was gay for all intents and purposes. People that viewed me, I was in public. I was campaigning. I was canvassing. I got called the three letter F word. I was isolated. And I felt the pain. And you know what? I um, identified with these people. Okay? I became a part of that community. And to this day, I'm a fierce gay rights advocate. Okay? But growing up as a witness, and more importantly, leaving the truth, um, I had that internalized homophobia. So my, this is like a personal message to you, is open your mind, open your heart, open your horizons. You probably have a lot of bad practices, uh, vernacular, words, emotions, thoughts. You may joke with your friends and say, oh, that guy's a whatever. You need to stop that, okay? Because until you do, um, you're no better than when you were in the hall, okay? Second group I want to talk about are atheists, okay? I'm not an atheist. I believe in God. I believe in the Christian God, particularly, okay? But there are some, you know, in the conscience class that say, you know, they turn away atheists. Um, they try to proselytize, you know? In addition, there are atheists in the conscious class that are turned off by religious messages. And I cannot blame or judge either group. But what we have to understand to be successful in this, partic in this shared experience, in this movement, we have to embrace those that are different. We have to embrace those that make us feel uncomfortable. Because that is how the Watchtower will succeed, is by dividing us. Okay? They're going to divide atheists versus Christians. They're going to divide divide homosexuals versus the straight community, okay? They're going to divide people on racial lines. They're going to division. There'll be divisions of all kind. Don't let them win, okay? Whenever your mind comes to a conclusion, it has stopped working. And that is the trick of the Watchtower. They provide their conclusions. You look up any subject, oh, this is what God thinks. Therefore, the witness mind has stopped working. And that's how they win. Open your mind. Do not come to conclusions, but also safeguard your heart, okay? There's a lot of people out there, predators, who will smell that you are damaged and that you are an easy target, and they'll take advantage of you. Drugs, alcohol, sexual predators, you know, our, our, our dear sisters, you know, there's a lot of guys out there who are going to take advantage. Our dear brothers, there's a lot of people that will take advantage of you. Keep your mind and heart open, but safeguard your heart. Just don't come to a conclusion about anyone, especially in this conscious class movement. All right. Um, so I'm preaching, but I feel very passionate about this. And the only way we all will succeed is if we are all in this together. No divisions. Okay. Worship your God or don't worship your God. Love the person you love or don't. You know what? You get what I'm saying. Anyway, I'm rambling. Um, keep your mind open. All right. God bless you. I love you. And live in love.